Good morning and welcome to the Kansas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. Just a couple of announcements before we get started. We are going to be hearing from universities this morning presenting for about six minutes on their own uh, campus and college. Um, you can use the question and answer button at any time to ask any of these panelists questions ask them questions about their own college, about the application process, really anything related to college admission is fair game here, and we love to hear from you. So um, your camera and microphone are turned off, so the Q&A feature is really the one way you have to communicate with us. Also, this is just one of many different sessions happening as part of this college fair. I think actually there's one more block of universities presenting after this, so be sure to sign up for an additional session. And the presentation is being recorded, so you can revisit visit this or check out some presentations you may have missed at strivescan.com slash Kansas. Those will all be live in about a week. So now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from the University of Northern Iowa, Jordan. Good morning. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So I have some visuals for you this morning. Um, so yes, as mentioned, I'm Jordan. I work with all Kansas students on behalf of the University of Northern Iowa. As the name suggests, we're in the northern area of Iowa. Um, pretty easy drive. We are the smallest of the three state schools in Iowa, but we are a public institution. Um, we have about 10 and a half thousand students, including our continued education. So our undergraduate population is about 9,500. Um, those students come from multiple states, countries, counties, et cetera. So we love that we can celebrate all of that um, on our campus. Across the board, we have quite a few options for different majors, over 90 majors. On top of that, we have undergraduate um, minors, endorsements, and certificates, as well as pre-professional programs, so different tracks and routes for pre-med, pre-dentistry, mortuary science, et cetera. Um, across the board, it's about 29 average class size, so that's including day one to graduation. Um, only 1% of our classes are over 100 students, so it's very rare to have that large lecture style experience on our campus. Um, I think as a public institution, that's kind of a thought that accompanies it, but it's actually not the experience most of our students have. Um, another great part about our academics is that 99% of our classes are taught by faculty, so not teaching assistants or graduate students. Um, we have lots of opportunities for research on our campus, but it's typically student-led and assisted by our faculty and staff, so that's pretty great that you have that opportunity to really dive in. Most of our students also graduate with um, experience in their career or their area of study. So what's awesome about that is that you can really dive in and have that experience um, to build your resume, to make all of the opportunities um, that you're looking for. So when you graduate, you have that job opportunity that you're searching for. A really great online resource would be our majors.uni.edu. So you can use that to see the details about every major that we offer. So a full list, as well as the um, A to Z details about it. So what classes are required? Where do you get to select opportunities for courses? Um, what majors and minors go together well? I apologize, I'm working from home. Um, and we have opportunities as well in the non-academic side. So really allowing students to get involved in the extracurricular opportunities that accompany the college experience. And um, over 260 organizations on campus, we are Division I Athletics. So if you're looking for an opportunity to be recruited, go ahead and fill out our um, resources online for being recruited for those different teams. Um, we also have traveling competing clubs like a JV experience and intramurals as well. So lots of opportunities with all of those that you can explore. Um, outside of that, we also have lots going on for music, theater, arts, vocal, instrumental, et cetera, and really random um, fun clubs just to meet other people across campus. My first choice of advice is to visit. Um, so we do have in-person on and on-campus visits as well as our online opportunities. So this web link will just give you all those options that you can explore. And the second thing would be if you're interested in UNI, apply. So for my juniors, anytime after you complete junior year, you are able to go ahead and start the application. We typically admit students July 1st and after, um, or for seniors, it's already active and we are rolling admissions so you can apply at any time. We do have some deadlines. So January 15th is gonna be our scholarship application deadline and our priority deadline for FAFSA as well. Um, for an out-of-state student or a Kansas resident, it's about 28,000 for a full year of housing, dining, tuition, and fees. So that all in cost. 
We do have automatic scholarships through our admission office. They start at that $5,000 $5, automatic. If you're an out-of-state Kansas student, you get that amount. Um, on top of that, if you have the GPA and ACT criteria that bumps you up into that next category, you can add one to $2,000 on top of that. We also have ACT and GPA criteria um, for the Panther Success Award. So as you can see, if you meet both of the criteria in that, that last one, or if you don't have a test score, since we are test optional for this incoming class in the current class, um, there is a GPA only opportunity. Um, on top of that, a stackable scholarship for United is GPA only again, and that is for our underrepresented populations or avid and trio programs. Um, then we also have a legacy award. So if you're an out-of-state student with legacy in your family, there's an award for that. Um, across the board, we just want to make sure that you know that we're here to help. So if you have questions at any time, please reach out to us. Our general email is admissions at uni.edu, but I'll be sure to go ahead and share my contact information specifically in the chat as well. Um, and please do ask all of your questions. Thank you so much, Jordan. And next, we will be hearing from DePauw University. Sorry, guys, just give me a second to share my screen here. Um, my name is Sam Schmelzer. I am one of the admission counselors at DePaul. I also work with all uh, students in the Kansas area. Um, sorry, guys. Um, so uh, just going into a little bit of depth here, DePaul is a top 50 liberal arts college in the US and the top liberal arts college in the state of Indiana. Um, so one thing that I always like to start off with is that what the liberal arts entails is essentially uh, that whether you are interested in the STEM fields, whether you're interested uh, in the arts and humanities, the social sciences, music, you will get a mix of all of the above through your DePaul education. Um, we really Sam, we're not seeing your, sorry to interrupt, we're not seeing your slide deck. I don't know if if you're having difficulty with that or we're just it's, seeing a blank window screen. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see. Is just try it. Now? now we have it. There you go. Okay, perfect. Um, and uh, but essentially uh, we have in place for our students because we believe in this teaching method is that we have our goal commitment, which is our commitment to students on an individual level that they will all, any student that graduates from DePaul will either be in their first job or in graduate school within six months of graduating from our institution. Giving a little bit of a breakdown of who we are as a campus and as a university, we have about 2000 students total, about 1,854 students within our College of Liberal Arts, and then another 118 students within our School of Music. So we do have the two distinct schools at DePaul, uh, which is also why we are known as DePaul University rather than DePaul College. Among our student body, we have about 20% first generation students, and 19% legacy students, so first generation students, meaning that they are the first person to attend and graduate from college within their family, and legacy students, meaning they've had a family member attend DePaul and wanted to pass that along to another member of their family. We're also represented from 39 of the 50 states in 39 different countries, and we have uh, more than a quarter of our students also participating in one of our 23 different varsity athletics. Teams. Um, so there is a really good student athlete balance at DePaul as well. Um, within our College of Liberal Arts, we have uh, 49 majors and 56 minors. You can see some of our top 10 majors on the screen, but none of these encompass more than about 11% of our student body. So our students are really studying a diverse range of majors. And if for any reason you don't see anything that you want to study within those top 10 majors, um, you can, or top uh, those 49 majors, 56 minors, uh, you can also self-start your own major as well or pursue an independent interdisciplinary major, which is an option for our students. Uh, within our School of Music, we have four different degree tracks, so a Bachelor of Music Performance, a Bachelor of Music Arts, a Bachelor of Music Education, and then the five-year dual degree program for students who want to major both in the College of Liberal Arts and the School of Music. So there really is no barrier between the two schools. 
Our students in the College of Liberal Arts can take classes in the School of Music, participate in ensembles and groups and pursue their music interests. And our School of Music students will also take classes within the College of Liberal Arts as well. Um, we do have tons of different co-curricular and extracurricular activities on campus. Um, we operate on a 4-1-4-1 academic schedule with four classes in the fall semester and four classes in the spring, uh, but also a winter term or J term that falls uh, at the end of the second semester from mid-May to mid-June. Um, we have tons of cool on-campus offerings during those winter terms and May terms, but also some really amazing study abroad trips. Uh, ranging from everything from a history course on the French Revolution, where our students travel to Paris to see the sites of the revolution, to an Enchanted Spaces children's literature course in the English department, where our students are going to Oxford and London to see some of the sites that inspired Harry Potter, Peter Pan, Alice in Wonderland, to a Geology of New Zealand course, where our students are going on geological digs throughout New Zealand. Um, as far as uh, semester-long and year-long study abroad programs, we have partnerships with 45 different countries on all seven continents. Um, so there are tons of opportunities for our students to go abroad and about 70% of our students are having some sort of study abroad experience. Um, we also have tons of access to internships. Our average student is graduating with two or more internships under their belt. And about a third of our students will do independent research with a faculty member at DePaul. We also have over 120 clubs and organizations um, that our students can get involved in at over 200 concerts, art shows, and performances per year put on through our School of Music, um, as well as speaker series, including an oven lecture series, which brings a major world leader to campus every single semester. We've hosted speakers like Condoleezza Rice, Bill Clinton, Peyton Manning, Andrew Luck, Jenna Fisher, who plays Pam on The Office, and Malala Yousafzai, who's a major women's rights and education advocate from Pakistan. And then we also have tons of resources for student wellness as well. There are a couple of different ways that you can apply to Nepal. One is through the common application, which is probably the more common that we see among our students. And then we also have our own university application as well. We are a test optional school and about 26% of our entering class last year were non-submitters. Uh, that number has also grown this year as well. And we do what's called a holistic review of student applications. So not just looking at your transcript and test scores, um, but also at your essay, your letters of recommendation, your activities, involvements outside the classroom, really everything that you submit to us will be considered in the, app in the application process. Um, we have a couple of different deadlines, our early decision deadlines, are November 15th and January 15th. So if you apply to DePaul or any other school under early decision, that means that you will be coming to that school in the fall if you are admitted. Um, and then we have non-binding early action and regular decision deadlines on February 1st. All of our students are automatically considered for merit scholarships just through submitting their application. And then we also have some additional scholarships that our students can apply. Um, and then we do consider students for need-based aid through their FAFSA and tax documents. And that's all I have for you all. I will drop my uh, information in the chat and hand it back off to our next presenter. Thank you so much, Sam. And our next presenter is from uh, Western Colorado University, Lindsay. Thank you so much, Josh. Um, I will go ahead and share my screen here. Um, but thank you so much for everyone joining us live or watching the um, recording later. I hope this information is super helpful for you. And I'm really honored to be on this panel of really excellent universities and institutions here. Uh, but again, my name is Lindsay. I'm from Western Colorado University in Gunnison, Colorado. What you're seeing on your screen here is a picture of campus. It's pretty small. Our Total student enrollment is just over 3,000 students, including our master's programs. And I think that's a really uh, large benefit of choosing a smaller institution like Western is having small class sizes and a really tight knit community. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, here in just a little bit. So some of the things that I really loved about being a student at Western um, when I was going to Western as a student is that our backyard is nature's best classroom. So we have over 100 majors and areas of study, but I think some of the more popular majors on campus at Western are some of those science related fields like wildlife biology or um, exercise and sports science just because we have so much access 
to do research for students even in their freshman year. You do not have to wait until you're a junior or senior to do research at Western. But even if you're not necessarily interested in a STEM related field, um, all of our classes provide a lot of hands-on learning and real world working experience before you even graduate. Uh, but we do have access to hundreds of thousands and millions of acres of BLM land, national forest land, all of this public land that students have access to for research purposes or for recreation purposes as well. And kind of how I was mentioning earlier about Western's tight knit community, our average class size is 17 students since we are a smaller institution. And the largest class that we have on campus will only hold about 50 students. And that would be a pretty big classroom for Western. So um, I think that's a really a big benefit to you as a student is getting that one on one interaction with your professor. All of your professors at Western will know your name, they'll know your major, they'll know what you're interested in, and they will know if you're not in class so they'll be able to check in on you and make sure everything's good to go. Um, it's really difficult to kind of slip through the cracks at a school like Western. As far as affordability goes Western is a relatively affordable for your institution for out of state students. Our out-of-state tuition is $18,600 per year. You can compare that to the national average of um, just over $22,500 per year and Western is affordable in that sense. Um, but 80% of students on campus do receive financial aid in the form of grants or scholarships, which is money that doesn't have to be paid back. And the biggest scholarship that we give out to students is our merit-based scholarship. And basically how this scholarship works since we are totally test optional for the fall of 2021, is that if you have at least a 3.35 GPA, you will automatically receive at least $8,000 per year to attend Western. And that can go all the way up to $10,000 per year, depending on your GPA. If you don't quite qualify with that GPA, we do have other scholarships available. Just because you're a student in Kansas, we have our Central Plains discount, which means you only pay 150% of in-state tuition. So that's about a $4,416 scholarship. And then um, also, since you're a, a Kansas student, we also have a neighboring state scholarship, which is an additional $1,000 on top of that. So if you don't qualify for that merit scholarship, you automatically qualify for about a $5,400 scholarship just for being from Kansas. There are other scholarship opportunities available as well, such as our common scholarship, which applies you to over 40 different scholarships on our website. And every academic uh, program has program based scholarships as well. And then as far as student services that Western offers, this is certainly not a comprehensive list, but just some things that I like to mention. We have an academic resource center that houses our disability services, academic advising, career services, study abroad, a lot of different resources for students within this um, academic resource center. And Something that I like to mention is that every single freshman and transfer student that comes to Western is automatically paired with an academic advisor who will help you make sure that your transition onto campus is smooth and that you're getting registered for the courses that you need to take your first semester. You don't have to declare a major right away, but um, basically you have until the end of your sophomore year to declare a major at Western. So if you're not totally sure what you wanna do, that's totally fine. That academic advisor will work with you each semester until you declare a major. And then once you declare a major, your academic advisor will switch to a professor that's in your major. So they'll be teaching your courses, they'll get to know you really well. Um, and they're, they're gonna be somebody that's in your corner for a long time. I'm still in contact with my academic advisor from Western and they've been a really great resource for me um, in the professional world as well. We also have a math tutoring center and a writing center. So if you ever need help with any math homework or studying for a math test or getting a paper edited, you can bring your paper in there or your math homework into our math tutoring center and get help with um, those things as well. We also have an epic mentorship program and these are current students. They're sophomores through seniors at Western who have experienced a lot on campus and they're a really great peer resource for you. And so every single freshman and transfer student is paired with an epic mentor as well. So that you can just kind of make sure that you're getting any questions answered that you need. They're there to help again, make sure that your transition onto campus is smooth. And then also that you uh, just have a friendly face to get to know once you're um, on campus as well. If you're interested in visiting campus, we would love to have you in person or virtually. 
And if you're interested in applying, you can use the code GoWestern2021 to waive your $30 application fee. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out, but I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. There's my contact information. Feel free to uh, contact me at any point. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Our next presenter is from the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. Hello, everyone, and good morning. I hope you're doing well. My name is Allie Osterheis. I use the pronouns she, her, and hers, and I am the Kansas and Missouri Admissions Counselor for uh, the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. A couple things to note about the University of Minnesota as we get into some general information is uh, number one, as you can see, our mascot is a gopher. That is Goldie the gopher. Uh, he has been ranked as the number one mascot in the Big Ten multiple times, um, and we absolutely love him. And I really hope through this presentation you can see um, how much pride and spirit we have uh, at our university and some of the different opportunities uh, that we have to offer on our campus. So our campus is part of the Big Ten Conference. It is a conference of primarily public, large uh, land grant institutions uh, that are research one as well. So as a tier one research university, we're actually in the top 10 in the nation in terms of research funding brought in year to year. A few points of pride for us are definitely uh, innovations and inventions that have had a profound impact on the world around us, not only in our state, in the country, but also the world at large. A uh, few are the Honeycrisp apple, which in my opinion is the best apple, hands down. Um, if you haven't tried one before, definitely pick one up at your local grocery store. Also the pacemaker and the uh, retractable seatbelt. So these are really important things. And something I really like to highlight is the fact that you can see in just like the spirit of our university, uh, the fact that undergraduate students are able to get involved in this research. Obviously, something that you expect from your college experience is learning new things. You're coming for an education, but you have the opportunity to really be a part of the cutting edge and you have the resources and the connections uh, to do so on our campus. Um, size wise, just to paint a picture of where we are located as well, we are in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. And our campus has about 53,000 students overall. That's about 30,000 undergraduate students, about 22,000 graduate and PhD students as well. In terms of academics at the undergraduate level, we have what I call a breadth and a depth in our academic experience. Obviously, we're a large university and uh, you want to know that we have the programs that you're interested in. My bet is we have almost everything you could think of um, that you might be interested in studying. If not, we do have some build your own major options too, where you can kind of piece together different interest areas to build your curriculum. But we do have over 150 majors and 135 minors, as well as about 200 graduate programs overall, including our medical school, law school, dentistry, veterinary science, and pharmacy. So it's really all on our campus. Um, and in terms of that depth, I think that's really important as well. When you're coming to a large campus, you don't want to feel like you're in a, a sea of students at any point. And I will say we do have some of those large lecture style classes, but the vast majority of your time spent at the University of Minnesota is within small pockets of community that we are really intentional about creating from day one when you arrive on campus. So you're actually applying directly to one of our eight freshman admitting colleges instead of the university at large. So automatically you're part of a smaller community. For example, our Carlson School of Management, the business school, takes in about 600 students a year. Not sure how large your high school class is, but that's pretty comparable and you really get to know the students and faculty around you. And you can see as well that we have a 17 to one student to faculty ratio. And if you ever are having those large lecture style classes, those will always be accompanied by a lab or discussion section that has less than 30 students in it. So you get time for that group work and really applying your learning throughout your time too. In terms of opportunities outside of the classroom, I won't get, get into a ton of depth here just based on time, but I want to say again that we have many, many opportunities. We have close to a thousand student groups on our campus, uh, definitely a commitment to social justice and um, interdisciplinary and intercultural connections, really learning from people who are different than you, who come from different perspectives. Um, and while you are on campus as well, we have living learning communities built into our residence halls so you can really find the people who share common interests with you and really start to make the university seem at home uh, right away, especially if you are coming from out of state from Kansas. 
In terms of location, I think this is what really sets us apart from a lot of other similarly sized universities with very similar academic opportunities. The fact that we are in the twin cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Uh, just in our backyard, we have 16 Fortune 500 companies that are actively recruiting our students. We're the largest university in the state of Minnesota and one of the largest in the country as well. Um, so you have abundant opportunities. And in the Twin Cities metropolitan area combined, we have about 4 million people. So you have the benefit of not only Minneapolis, but also St. Paul's, two downtowns to explore and really a ton to do. Um, and I will say I went to the University of Minnesota and I still am never bored living in the Twin Cities uh, because there's always like a new restaurant, new concert, a new lake. We're the, le the land of 10,000 lakes. There's new things to explore all the time. In terms of admissions, um, we do have a uh, a common application as well as our Golden Gopher application located on our website. Um, you can see some of the requirements for our application. One thing I would like to point out is that we have a no test required policy for fall 2022. So if you're a current junior in high school, you do not need to submit an ACT score. Totally up to you. And just note as well that your application puts you into automatic consideration for honors as well as scholarships. So it's all bundled into one, um, makes it really easy for you as a student. With that, I will post my contact information in the chat. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share with you today. It's been really uh, great talking about the university, and I really hope to uh, hear from you again in the future. We're always here to help in your college search. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ali. And our last university to present is Millikan University. Give me just a second. Follow suit here. All right, so just to begin, my name is Gavin Halpin and I'm a St. Louis regional recruiter. So I'm not based on campus. I live in St. Louis and work with students from about a dozen states, uh, including Kansas. So let's get started. Millican is located in Decatur, Illinois. For those of you unfamiliar with where Decatur might be located, if you look at the state of Illinois map at the bottom, see that blue icon pinpointing uh, we're right as about as central Illinois as you can get in between the state capital of Springfield and where the University of Illinois is located on our east uh, in Champaign, Illinois. But the town of Decatur is about 70,000 individuals and has a great small town feel to it, but has amenities. Uh, just depends on what you're needing as a student uh, to make that right fit. But if you see in the top right, that's a, a pic of our downtown area that has fun shops and restaurants but also has several places that our students call home in the form of student-run ventures. So we have students that run a coffee shop downtown. We have students that run a student art gallery downtown. And we also have a black box theater space that our students are, are frequently uh, producing shows, again, fully student-run, no faculty-led experiences. Uh, but also we see members of our community engage on campus. So it's not uncommon to see members of a variety of age groups interact in our library, coming to athletic events, coming to uh, fine arts performances or lectures. So there's a great uh, homey feel to our campus environment due to the connectivity that those two communities have. I know a variety of schools will throw uh, many different rankings out there. Here are a couple that we're really proud of. I'll just talk about the third one. There are truly hundreds of schools within the Midwest and there are over a hundred schools within the state of Illinois. And we take great pride in being a school that is career focused. We want our students, the, the goal would be, you know, at graduation, you're walking across the stage, getting your diploma, and you have that plan in place. Maybe you already have that job offer. So we take great pride in being uh, ranked number three best college in Illinois to land you a job. So a great focus on just what that next step is going to be. Here's a good snapshot of what Millican offers. I won't read all of these to you but we are that small private institution with 2000 total students. Our average class size is 15 and then our student to faculty ratio is 10 to one. So there's no TAs. You're going to be taught by faculty in every experience uh, from day one until the, the time you graduate. If you look in the top right side, you'll see that we have 50 plus academic programs. I'll kind of break down the colleges and schools that those are made up within. We do have a big emphasis in our campus community on involvement, but more specifically, we do see uh, a big participation within our athletic side of things. So we do have 23 men's and women's division three sports, a great focus on be, being a student athlete, knowing that the student comes first 
uh, but we are a part of the CCIW, which is the Collegiate Conference of Illinois and Wisconsin, which is one of the most competitive Division III uh, conferences nationwide, which is always nice to know that you're going to be uh, continuing to be challenged as a student, but also athletically. I mentioned those 50 plus academic programs. Here's the individual colleges and schools we offer. So we have the College of Arts and Sciences that would house, you know, the humanities, the communication, history, political science, also house your standard sciences. So biology, chemistry. Uh, one thing I always like to note for students with us, if you are coming in and as a student that is interested in going on to med school, vet school, whatever that next step would be, a lot of times students are like, I'm going to be majoring in pre-med. You're going to be majoring in the sciences uh, and you're most likely biology, but you would be advised on a pre-professional track to make sure that you are at or exceeding the expectations for that next step. So I always like to make that distinction for students. Next, we have our College of Fine Arts. This is one that we see the majority of uh, our volume of applications for, more specifically our School of Theater and Dance. So the individual programs within the College of Fine Arts are our School of Art, our School of Arts Administration and Technology, our School of Music, and then our School of Theater and Dance. Uh, the most popular program that we've been on several top 10 lists nationwide uh, is our Bachelor of Fine Arts or BFA in Musical Theater. Next, you see our College of Professional Studies, so all areas where you would need additional licensure. So thinking of the nursing side, the education side, and then the exercise science and sport uh, for the athletic training piece. And then finally, we see our Tabor School of Business. This is a endowed school that we see have our general business administration program, but also a variety of accounting, international business, finance. So we see students pick up a variety of minors and majors if they are within that school. When it comes to involvement, we do have 90 plus student organizations across campus. I would say think of involvement as forms of bubbles across campus in the athletic and wellness bubble, the fine arts and performance bubble, the Greek life bubble, on and on. On average, a Millican student ends up uh, joining three different organizations across campus. So even if you come in saying, I'm going to do this one, chances are over your four years, you'll add uh, an another bubble within your time. Another opportunity would be the study abroad piece. Uh, we offer the more traditional being away for a full semester, but also the opportunity for maybe an immersion trip of a week to 10 days or a month. Usually those are faculty led experiences that we see uh, students take great advantage of in their time with us. And finally, if you'd be interested in applying for this recruitment cycle and for next, we are test optional. Truly all we would need to see would be your high school transcripts. Uh, if you want to send additional materials, in the form of letters of recommendation or a writing sample or an essay. We'd love to look at them to get to know you better. We have our regular free application. We're also a member of the Common App. Well, there's no preference given either way, uh, but feel free to interact with us. We as admission counselors want to interact with you, so let me know of any help I can be. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gavin, and thank you to all of our panelists this morning for sharing with us about your colleges and universities. And thank you to all of you for joining us, uh, students, parents, and, and counselors. When, I, when you close the window, you'll see a link to a very quick four question survey and we really appreciate any feedback that you can provide there. Also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted. There's one more session. So uh, be sure to check out um, other colleges and universities there. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording at strivescan.com slash Kansas. So thank you so much. Thanks again to all of my friends on the panel and look forward to seeing you again in the future. Bye-bye.